the US stock market has been content to rally to new highs with many stocks going to the moon, including most of our AI tech giants, a rally that I have been distributing into to the extent that I have now sold 80% of my holdings in the top 6 AI stocks in my portfolio, some of which I've been accumulating for over a decade, i.e. Microsoft. The primary objective of this analysis is to determine where we stand in terms of the top. After all, all bull markets eventually do top, either ending with a crash 1987 style or a bear market like 2000 and 2007. So what to hold and what to sell is the question I am asking myself with a view to riding out a potential bear market or crash, where this analysis deploys a new automated metric of individual stock selling levels so that one better knows where one stands in terms of one's portfolio, all in just one table. After all, the risk we all fear is that of a 2000 style collapse that sends stocks lower for the next 20 years. Remember that bear market bottomed with a 85% collapse for tech stocks. Yes, one could say that the likes of Amazon, Microsoft, Apple had become dirt cheap, but that would have been a very painful and prolonged discounting event. So a case of balancing the risks of letting some stocks ride whilst cashing in those that will pay a heavy price for their over exuberance, all whilst being aware of the AI megatrend trending along in the background. And we have the likes of AMD going to the moon. Yes, in hindsight, we can all wish we had bought more. I came close to mid-May to buying more, but at that time was fully invested and thought it unwise to take on even more risk on. But I and my patrons have had plenty of opportunity to buy AMD all the way from March 2020 lows right up until my analysis of 10th of May at a price of $78 or better. That AMD traded down to several times so I will give AMD extra attention in this analysis. And this video is excerpted from my recent extensive analysis that compares the current stock market valuation against the 2000 bubble peak when we had the likes of Cisco, Intel and Microsoft riding high and look at how they have fared since. For instance, Cisco was the numero uno stock of the 2000 bubble peak destined to double in price. And what did Cisco do? It fell by 90%. So this extensive analysis takes a look at where we stand are we about to repeat 2000 or similar? Well, you'll find out in my extensive analysis that has first been made available to patrons who support my work. So do consider becoming a patron by supporting my work for just $3 per month. That is soon set to rise to $4 per month. So you can lock it in now for $3 before the price hike. Stock market bubble valuations 2000 verse 2021. How to quickly know if a stock is overvalued or undervalued. Simply divide the annual earnings by the price and you get a trailing price slash earnings ratio. As far from being perfect, hence why I have long since progressed to what I call the EC ratio or expensive slash cheap ratio a formula used to better determine if a stock is expensive or cheap, i.e. EC, based on 15 metrics that also includes the price earnings ratio. Nevertheless, I still use the P ratio when referring to stocks because I generate the EC ratio only for a handful of stocks. Maybe one day I'll get around to writing, writing a web application that automatically generates it for any stock and makes the results available to patrons. So how do today's tech giant crap stocks compare to those of March 2000 at the peak of the Nasdaq dot com bubble? Firstly, 
This table shows how the giant megatrend corps of the dot-com era have fared over the past 21 years. As you can see, Microsoft has performed the best, after all it is one of the fangs, and is actually up 290% in terms of market cap. Cisco 50% down, Intel 50% plus down, Oracle treading water, and IBM a good 40% down. Cisco the backbone of the then fast developing internet, much as Tesla is the backbone of the fast emerging EV and automated vehicle sector, with the likes of Google throwing tens of billions into AI and robotics each year. Everyone owns Cisco stock just as everyone owns Google, Amazon, Apple and Facebook stock today. Back in March 2000, Cisco was trading at a price of $146 on a PE of 120 to the moon, to the moon, where many were convinced Cisco was the internet. One of the most valuable certification tracks of the time were those by Cisco where even I was CCNA certified, desperately trying not to get further sucked into the highly costly Cisco certification tracks where CCNA gave way to CCNP to CCIE and beyond. The certifications were mushrooming, mushrooming into more OTT levels than that what Scientology has. CCNA, OTT, IV, <laughs> where after decades and several hundreds of thousand dollars one would become one with the internet, be able to meld one's mind and move data packets around. Other companies soon saw what a money spinner the certification tracks were and so the likes of Microsoft started off with their own such as Microsoft Office certifications so you, so you can get certified to open and close Word documents for instance. But I'm digressing. So what happened to the king of the internet, Cisco? Which according to many at the time was destined to go to the moon. Well, even 21 years later, Cisco has still not even recovered to the halfway mark in market cap terms. Even the share price trades below the March high of $146 split it to $78. This despite extensive buybacks in recent years to try and drive the price higher to overcome that $2,078 brick wall. The PE ratio says it all as to why, where Cisco's current PE of 23 is a far cry from 120 that it was trading at 21 years ago and does sow the seeds for what has transpired since. Imagine all those who either bought in the months before or just after the dot com bubble top and decided to hang on have yet to break even. You have to understand that in March 20, 2000 it was a done deal. Cisco was the Nvidia, was the Amazon, was the Apple of its time and destined to become the world's first trillion dollar stock. Whilst everyone recognised there were many overpriced stocks but Cisco was the bluest of blue chip internet stocks. Cisco was going to own the future, it was game over, as Cisco was the internet. Just as many today multi-trillion dollar corps as unassailable blue chips and then we have the insane valuation the likes of Tesla trading on a P of 364. Understand this, when the bubble burst Tesla's fate will be far worse than that of the top five stocks of 2000. Digging further into the depth of history courtesy of Cisco's network hardware, here's one investment analyst Paul Weinstein working for First Boston, Boston said of Cisco in March 2000. We humbly submit that over the next two to three years, Cisco could be the first trillion dollar market cap company and don't think they wouldn't love it. As Weinstein put Cisco on a strong buy at virtually its final highest price it ever traded at. Three years later Cisco instead of doubling had collapsed to one tenth its March high. I wonder what this clown is doing these days, who is he giving advice to? Well, 
it was typical it wasn't just a one-off it was typical of the time just as it's typical of the time now you got all these youtubers these idiots morons buying the dips on the likes of tesla what amazon microsoft they're ridiculously over overvalued even google's overvalued but not as on par with amazon 60 times earning are you insane 60 times earning for a two trillion dollar coat cisco now 20 at p or 23 it, i wouldn't buy it you know i have a rule that if you're gonna buy a company buy it when it's trading under a p of 20 even as a good company like cisco presumably is although i'm not taking a close look but you know what companies i'm invested in and i've invested in virtually all of them not not all of them because sometimes you do have to pay for growth such as amd and nvidia i did pay for growth but they were tiny when i bought them not was it say, six seven hundred billion dollar corps you know the smaller the cap the higher you can pay for future growth but you don't pay 60 times earning for a two trillion dollar corporation you're never going to make money anyway that's enough for cisco for now stock market formal hit september brick wall dow 2021 trend forecast current state my latest comprehensive analysis of the stock market has just been posted to patreon a full spectrum analysis that concludes in a detailed trend forecast into the end of 2021 and then continues all the way into 2022 with indications for what to expect even for the remainder of 2022. Analysis that had me dig deep to clear the mists of time. All the way to deep analysis of the seasonal trends on a scale that you will not see anywhere else from the usual seasonal analysis that's expanded on multiple time frames to the sh new short-term seasonal trend and the presidential cycle best time of year to invest in stocks and a 2022 seasonal investing pattern and then putting it all together into a final stock market trend forecast and then coverage of ai stocks and my buying plan as well as the high risk stocks portfolio and then we take a look at afghanistan china the comprehensive analysis that took me a good well two weeks to do this analysis whilst my very latest analysis is a silver price trend forecast from october 2021 to may 2022 and a lot more than that including the risks of chernobyl and more as well as covering the stocks AI stocks portfolio all first made available to patrons just the other day and again for immediate first access to all of my analysis and trend forecast I do consider becoming a patron by supporting my work for just three dollars per month due to increase to four dollars lock it in now and here's the schedule of my forthcoming analysis yeah, silver price trend forecast stock market trend forecast for september to december how to get rich which is 90 percent complete this is patrons exclusive to patrons it's taking me a good six seven months more now eight months eight months of hard work on this and it's no bs hardcore telling you exactly how to get rich well how what i've learned for my 35 year career in trading investing and in business or what it takes straight to the point rules no bs no filler just hardcore then we have a uk price to trend focus and i'll update my us house prices and a look quick look at canada and the us dollar and british pound analysis and finally gold which i'm not really interested in but patrons ask for it so i will look at gold Silver first and then gold. Silver, um, no, since crypto, I've gone off silver and gold. I have positions in them, but not significant. So, again, for immediate first access to all of my analysis and trend forecasts, 
can do is consider becoming a patron by supporting my work for just three dollars per month that's soon set to increase to four dollars that's not much i'm seriously underpricing myself some patrons say i should be charging 100 times your the quality of analysis you're getting is worth 100 times what i'm charging for it but you have to remember that I'm coming from the vantage point of giving my analysis away for free, which I did for 15 years on the Market Oracle website. 15 years. And I was only forced to go to Patreon because everybody was ripping me off, copying me, copying everything, and trying to deal with all these thieves. It was like playing that, you know, hitting the thing on the head and another one pops up. It's point I just gave up. I go, all right, I'll try Patreon. If this doesn't work, then I'm just I'm gonna stop publishing my analysis. I'm just gonna can trade and invest. But Patreon seems to be working. It's you know I'm actually capitalizing on my investment. Remember, I am a capitalist, I'm not a communist. So I have to capitalize on what I give out. So I'm not gonna do it. So the market or website runs at a loss because everybody's ripped you off. There's no ad revenues and whatnot. So that was the way I capitalized on it before. And now I'm capitalizing it through Patreon to some de limited degree. At least it covers the cost for Market Oracle and other online activities. So that's good. Anyway, enough of this waffling. See you in the next video. And do consider becoming a patron. As we defend ourselves, protect ourselves from the rampant money printing inflation by the central banks insane money printing as though it's not going to feed through into wage and price inflation big inflation is coming as i've been flagging for well over six months more it's more like a year now and that's why i was saying last year if you're thinking of buying big ticket items do it now before the price hikes which have transpired you know i bought a culture k7 for 340 pound Current price on Amazon is, was it, 565 and similar for lots of other tech items I bought. For instance, the components in my PC that I ordered in January and got delivered in March was £3,100. Current price of the components is over £4,000. Crazy, the inflation is here and it is accelerating regardless of what the indices say. So protect yourselves by investing in assets that are leveraged to inflation and AI tech stocks are leveraged to inflation and are about to get discounted. So do subscribe to my YouTube channel for such analysis and do consider becoming a patron.